Today, I'm going to teach you how Notion works. A very simple yet a life-changing documentation tool that I have been using since 2020. I'll show you how my Notion looks, what all do I document and some very important resources for you as a beginner. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. So before we move ahead and understand what is Notion, we have to define the problems that all of us face. The issue is that you cannot remember everything that you learn. Even if you're reading the best books, watching all the tutorials, there's a huge chance that you might forget the tiny details after a year. If you forget everything that you learn, even though it would be extremely valuable, it's a waste of time and energy. So you need a place to document your thoughts and to make notes. Second is, sometimes you end up having ideas that are really good or you might find something that is very interesting. And the usual use case is that a lot of us have these WhatsApp groups or some scribbles here and there. The issue with those scribbles and undocumented thoughts is that it's very difficult to go back to them. So even if you have a group where you're just posting texts and just adding information, if you want to go back to that information six months from today, it'll be very difficult for you. So you need an organized way to note down your ideas, inspiration and insights before they fade. So you need something which is accessible on your phone, on your computer, it is on the cloud. Second is physical pages are very difficult to maintain and search. So if you're a big fan of physical writing or physical journaling, that is a great habit because it puts you in a zone. It is great for your focus. The issue with really big books or with big piles of notebooks is that they can either get lost they can either be forgotten if you're shifting from one place to another or they might just become very heavy because let's just say that you have one notebook for your ideas, one notebook for your learnings, whatever it is, three, four years down the line, you will realize that you can't carry these books with you. They're not accessible to you at all times. So it is best to keep them on the cloud. Secondly, searching manually through your notes is very difficult because you can't really do control F in a physical notebook or in a pile of notebooks and get exactly what you want. Third, you don't have any ability to share specific pages of your notes. So let's just say you've been collecting resources and you have this big notebook. You can't really tear down a specific page and share it to your friend. But here we have a solution where you can actually share specific snippets of your virtual diary and have other people comment on it, view it, share it or whatever it is. And most importantly, you can publish these things on the internet. So I literally tell people to use Notion to make their portfolios, to make their websites, to write their case studies and simply publish them on the internet because Notion allows you to actually upload all of your data on cloud and it gives you a URL so you can copy that URL and send it to whoever you want. So this is a screenshot of my notion and on the very left you have this thing called as index and inside this index you will realize that there are these pages. The titles are something like important links, Jan 2023. These are some titles that I have put. Don't worry, wait till the end of the video. You will understand everything. I just want to show you that on the left side, there's this index. And on the right side is the page that I have opened. So right now, currently, I have opened this page called learning. And inside learning, I basically document everything interesting that I learn. So it could be around marketing resources. There's a YouTube channel that I regularly follow the future. So I have a dedicated page where I've documented those learnings. There's this page called my quick insights where literally I will show you the pages later on. I literally have a page for every single month. So here, this Jan 2023, this is actually a sub page, a sub page of this mega page called my quick insights so it literally has like a couple of months i've been documenting since like 2021 i think right it's literally an organized virtual diary and you can add text you can add images you can embed videos you can upload your own videos as well and you can also add links from the internet this is literally a second brain for you because now I am not relying on my brain's memory to keep track of all the things that I'm learning. So if I ever want to search something, I don't have to go inside my brain. I have to go inside my notion, which is actually a second brain for me. When you search something on Google, it is not necessary that you get the best results, right? You get a result which is being pushed on that search engine or probably a result which has really good metadata or SEO. And you probably have not even filtered any of those results on your own. Somebody else is controlling what you see on that search engine. Here, now that I have been building my Notion repository, this Notion 
literally becomes my own personal search engine where every single link, text and resource has gone through this investigation. It has gone through this filtering round. So when I search something in my Notion document, I know that I have cherry picked all of this information and three, four years down the line, I know that this notion is going to become so valuable for me and people like me who are looking for similar resources. So there are some core features that you need to know. Notion has like a big range of features, but these four or five features are very, very important. First is the concept of pages and second is the concept of headings and text. Basically, if I have opened this page right here, firstly, you can add an emoji. Right? You just have to click on add emoji and when you see the demos, you will know how it works. And this is how the emojis will appear. Next, we have a heading. So technically, this is not a heading. This is actually the title of the page. So every time you make a new Notion page, it asks you for a title. And this is what you can write. It's just like a quick summary of what you can expect. And then after that, you can add text. But in this specific screenshot, I have not added text. I've added more sub pages. So it's literally like a big book. Within a big book, there are smaller books and so on. So these are like these uh, bunch of sub pages that uh, include all of my design learning. So I was just getting started in 2020 uh, and I knew that I should collect like a lot of design resources. So for every year, I have a page of design resources. This page is just for the 2022 design resources. So imagine the amount of information I have access to. If somebody messages me that, Ansh, can you please give us some resources for visual design inspiration? I don't have to think about it. I go to my Notion page take out this page and give it to them. And yes, make sure you watch till the end because I'm gonna share a very important playlist that can help you get started from beginning. So now let me show you some of my personal pages. The most common use case is of journaling insights. So as I said, there's this page called My Quick Insights in my learnings panel where I've made different, different years. So basically this is the heading. And then within that heading, I have a sub page for every single month. So if, as an example, <clears throat> if I open November 2022, so every time I want to write about something, I have like a quick summarized heading. Then I write the text and I try to limit the text because I know that when I come back to this, I don't want to read a lot. I just want like the most important valuable points. And then in the middle, I would just bold a few sentences. This is just basic body text, but I bold it so that now my eyes can sort of bucket this entire information uh, into small, small digestible chunks. Next use case is of documenting resources. So as you go through the internet, as you see very interesting stuff on Instagram or YouTube, you can actually compile all those resources because you might not need those resources at the time uh, but you might need them later on. So let's just say that I have this big page called mega list of resources where I have, you know, uh, UX inspiration items, UI learning inspiration, like a lot of stuff, right? And if you're a designer, take a screenshot of these links because they will really help you. And what I usually do is sometimes I also take a screenshot. So on my Mac, if I do command shift four, it enters the screenshot mode. If you drag an area, it takes a screenshot. The next level is that if you enter the screenshot mode with command shift four and just press the control key once, when I select the region, it actually copies the screenshot to my clipboard. And then I can directly go into my notion page and do command V and paste it there. So I get the screenshot without cluttering my desktop. If you must be wondering, how do I take these screenshots as well of these window screenshots? So if I do command shift four actually, and if I select any window on my Mac and press space bar, it will actually take a screenshot of that specific window and it comes like this. It is actually very, very cool, very, very helpful. So yeah, second use case is of documenting resources around the subject that you're learning. Third is documenting the tiniest of details that you have been discovering. So you might be learning design, psychology, marketing, AI tools, whatever it is. I have been documenting the tiniest of details since 2020. So this is my design knowledge draft where I had just started working for Zardal and I was reading a lot, consuming a lot, working like 12 hours a day. And I was learning so much because I was so deep into the entire subject that I knew that I have to type this somewhere. I have to keep a track of everything that I'm learning. That is what I did. I literally made a lot of these sub pages and trust me, each of these sub pages has like headings. They have text and supporting images. One very important metric or one very important tip that I want to share around documenting on Notion is that you should always have a heading, the URL or the source of that information followed by a screenshot because sometimes just by reading text and the URL, you might not recall what this is for. On the other hand, make sure that the heading 
is actually something that invokes a certain emotion for you. So in this example, I am not writing the heading as with poly.com because I know that eight months down the line, I might not even remember this name. So in my heading, I have written something that I know I can write when I'm searching for it. So maybe seven months down the line, I can write something like AI for textures or AI for icons. At that point, the search engine will be able to see these keywords. And then I will also have the source from which I actually received this information. So it's a small tip, but it really goes a long way when you're building your Notion repository. Another use case is for team and project management. So I personally use Notion for my social media planning as well. So my entire team has access to my Notion workspace. We have like this table where we have a schedule for every single day. You can also have like a table where you can actually track status of each and every video. So which one is in editing, which one has started, like a lot of cool stuff. We're not going to go into the details of the features because this video is literally about showing you how my Notion works and all the different use cases. Now the question is how do you get started? It is very simple. In the next two, three minutes, I will show you how to download Notion. Right now, there's this one YouTube video, not video, actually a YouTube playlist uploaded by Notion themselves. So they have a YouTube channel and there they have a playlist called new to Notion start here. In just 10 minutes, literally in just 10 minutes after watching these videos, you will be good to go. You will know all the important features you really, really need to know to get started. Now, how to get Notion? See, Notion works on your computers and phones. To download the web app, you can literally go to notion.so and on the very top of their page, they have this download section where you can download it for iOS, Android, uh, Mac and Windows. And once you download it for the Mac, you can log in in the app as well, or you can log in in your web browser as well. So it's literally like opening Facebook. So when you visit Notion for the first time, they will ask you to sign up and then you just have to put in your email address and they will create an account for you. And the free access gives you a tons of features. I personally use the paid version because now I have a lot of editors, a lot of sub pages. I have to embed a lot of big images, but just for getting started, the free plan is good enough. So when you create the account for the first time, they will ask you a few basic questions and you can just write anything. Uh, you can also simply click on skip. Uh, once you do that, they will ask you, how are you planning to use Notion? You can simply select for myself uh, because it is free for one person. And there's a huge chance that this UI might change, like the entire onboarding might change, but just wanted to give you a quick overview. When you open Notion for the first time, they have an onboarding process. Basically, they want to educate you about how Notion works. So they will make like a few dummy sub pages on the left side. There's going to be a pop up that says, you know, some templates to get started. So you don't have to get intimidated about it. Just click on clear templates. So here on this icon here, uh, just click on clear templates and it will erase all your index. So that is the best. I, I mean, that is what I would recommend you to do. And uh, before we move ahead, let's just quickly revise the UI, right? So on the very left side, you have the index and you can create a new page by hovering on this icon right here. So when you do that, it will actually create a new page for you. So this is how a blank page on Notion looks like. So by default, the first thing that it asks you is a title. So when you start typing, it is basically the page title which appears on the left side of the index. So this is the, the title of your page will appear on the index. Anything that is inside the title, it's not available on the index. So be very careful about how you type the title of the page. And as soon as you press enter, Notion will give you options to add content. So it has like this cute menu where it says that you can add text. You can either create another sub page, how you saw in my Notion pages. You can create a to-do list and then within text, you also have different categories. So basically you can have a big heading, you can have a medium heading, you can have a small heading as well. There are different shortcut keys as well. So if you press, let's just say you're editing the document. If you press the slash key, the slash key will open up this menu back again. In fact, when you're typing, if you press hash, if you press the hash key, it would automatically bring you to heading one. So press hash, type anything that becomes a big heading. If you press hash twice, it becomes heading two. And you know, this is three times hash. So yeah, just a few shortcuts. Uh, you will get a lot of these shortcuts on Google. So just go on Google and type Notion shortcuts. You will get a Notion page 
of notion shortcuts as well uh, if you hover over a specific item in the quick menu it will also give you like a cute tool tip to show you uh, what you can expect now to add a sub page within a big page you can actually go here on the index and you have like this cute plus option so you can quickly add a new page inside so when you click on plus it will open as a pop-up so it's like a new sub page pop up and literally the functionality remains the same. If you click on this full screen icon, it will again expand it. So this is just like a sub page inside my main page. And uh, once you click on OK, click on cross, your sub page is going to be visible here. So we've covered the absolute basics in this video. If you learned something valuable, make sure you click on subscribe and like this video because in the upcoming videos, I will actually go deep into how Notion works. This first video was just to set the basics, right? If you go on Google and type Notion templates, Notion has free templates as well as paid templates. So they have templates for every single category for design, for product management. Trust me, you will get a lot of inspiration from these ready-made templates. So if you open any of these templates, you can simply click on duplicate and that template will be duplicated in your Notion workspace. The only reason why I made this video is because I want to teach Notion AI. So in the upcoming set of videos, we will also discuss about Notion AI, which is an AI assistant built inside Notion. And you can do a lot of exciting stuff using Notion AI right within your Notion workspace. If you're here for the first time, my name is Ansh Mehra and I talk about artificial intelligence, design and psychology. In fact, we've created some very cool videos on ChatGPT, which is a must use tool. If you don't know how it works, please check it out. We've made a video on Mid Journey as well, which is used to create AI art. Both videos are freely available on our YouTube channel. I will share the links in description. In fact, we also have a free UX design course that helps you understand what UX is, how apps are designed. It's a 15 episode course available in both Hindi and in English. The links are in the description. We also have a course for founders and entrepreneurs who are trying to build their own apps. So it talks about building a team, understanding the problem statement and a lot more available in both Hindi and in English. Make sure you show your support by commenting below. We absolutely love your reviews. If you download Notion, write something on it, put a story on Instagram and tag me on at the rate anshmera.work. I personally see every single story. I personally acknowledge every single review that I get on my Instagram. With that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Keep designing awesome stuff. This is your dost Ansh Mehra signing out. If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.